show, guys. What is up? It's Teach here, coming at you again with another video on Ark Survival Ascended. And I'm going to show you in this video how to run very quickly the um, tech cave, right? So once you've got everything, sorry, I couldn't think of the word. It's super easy. All you need is the stuff that I have in my inventory. You're going to need a pretty good shotgun with about 500 shots if you're planning on doing this on Gamma. Um, if you're doing this on Alpha, you're going to be about I don't know, four or five times that because you're going to need some more people, but that's what I would suggest. But you're going to need all of the uh, things, the soups and stuff like that that you on my bottom right because it gives you increased healing. It gives you increased, uh, just increased everything, basically. You'll need some food. You'll need some water, med brews, and then you'll need a, you can see that I've got a chest piece and boots, and the rest of it is just uh, fur, right? because the fur is going to keep you alive on the inside because it's super cold in there. Now, it's going to cause a bunch of damage right up front, so just be aware of that. You can see that I am taking damage here, but my soups that I'm eating are actually counteracting the damage that I'm taking. Um, so those soups are pretty important. Now, but that's, that's kind of like the start. Outside of that, that's all the basic stuff you need. You'll need an Archaeopasterix or whatever they're called in order to get past all this, the stuff that's kind of difficult. So we're just going to skip everything. If you don't mind, smash that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm, and then consider subbing to the channel. Now, I'm going to show there's gonna be, I'm going to put myself into some like refill stats mode so I can show you what not to do inside this cave. Um, but it's pretty simple, right? You get inside, you got five minutes till the door closes. If you're not inside when the door closes, sorry, you're not going. So, yeah, that's kind of what it is. So basically, this entire cave, there's three parts. There's the part that I'm about to go down now that you have to either fight the dinos or skip all of them. The second part is kind of like the defeating the individual bosses, and then you've got to feed, defeat the overseer. And those they are basically your three parts of this cave. Now, in order to basically do all of that, we're going to do it in the cheesiest way possible because we don't want to fight anything, right? We want to avoid all of the stuff. And you can see that right now, that's our goal. That's all we want to do. We're just going to stay up as high as we can in the ceiling and uh, just avoid all of these not fun things to face. Now, you can do that very easily. The Archaeopasterix, because it's kind of like a coasting dino, will continue to hold you right up into the ceiling. And um, you, you can avoid pretty much everything pretty easily, right? Um, and in order to do that, you're just going to drop down this uh, little cavern right here. Now, all you're going to do with this is you can see that these guys are uh, freaking out. They're all trying to attack me. I let them typically fall before I do because they will fall. You don't want them jumping on top of you because sometimes they can cause a lot of problems. Um, but you're just going to kind of coast down to the bottom of this entire cave. Now, once you get down to the bottom, you're uh, kind of going to try and get a little bit of a, a lip and find a lip if you can. And uh, that's going to let you get a little bit of height because you want to stay pretty high when you're doing this because if you're not super high up, um, you can see that there's some very scary things down there that'll kill you. So be careful of that. Um, once you get down to the bottom of this, you can see that all that nasty, terrifying, not fun stuff is uh, waiting to kill you. So just stay with your bird. Your bird will, bird will save you. The bird is definitely the safe way to do this. Now, again, if you are still watching, go ahead, smash that subscribe button. I've been looking, try, I guess I have been trying to get uh, 100,000 subscribers ever since I started this channel. And that's kind of been my little dream. So if you want to help me out, it costs you nothing. So that's, that's a little bit of an incentive there, right? Um, in order to do that, um, but that would be super dope if you want to subscribe to the channel. So yeah, I would appreciate it, but it's up to you, obviously. You do you. Um, yeah, so now that we've got down to the bottom of that cavern and I've kind of did my little spiel right there, you're just going to keep going. Um, never stop, because if you stop the uh, dinos there, once you as soon as you hit the ground, all of the dinos nearby are going to do their best to murder you, and we don't want to do that, so yeah, we avoid that. Your Arcuopasterix just lets you fly past literally everything. Um, yep, and we're still just going to keep going. And as long as you're staying high in the air like I am right now, you don't need to be super careful, right? Because everything down here wants you dead. But if we can just avoid literally all of it, we don't need to do any of that. Now, it's kind of hard to steer this thing. So uh, what you want to do, the best case scenario, is you go out over the lava. Now, going out over the lava does two things. One, if anything is following you, it's going to go into the lava and it's, it's hosed. Two, it gives you a wide berth so you can kind of avoid some of the shenanigans like there's the uh, yeah you don't want that thing to smoke your armor right now and you don't want to get hit by a uh, little mole jumping out of the ground that's going to knock you and then you got all kinds of problems and you wasted all your resources staying over the lava as much as possible even though it seems counterintuitive is what you want to do we're just going to hover over the top of this right that's all we need to do 
Now, one thing I will mention, the RQ Pysterix, right? The thing that we are currently flying right now. We want to make sure we have one with good stamina. If you don't have one with good stamina, don't do this. Um, you need to have one and just like level it up, let it kill some things, max out your stamina. Because if you don't max out that stamina, sometimes it can cause problems when you're flying. You can get these things done. Now, it's not hard to get them with really good stamina, or you can just take a break where you see like that rock right there. I could just go land on that and there's nothing nearby that can kill me. Um, so just make sure you've got some stamina when you're doing this because you want to stay high. Now, especially towards this last part of this cave, right? We're just skipping all of this um, towards the last part of this cave. There's some stuff at the very bottom, and it's really frustrating, and I've done this way too many times. You can see how all these tinos down there, we're just skipping all of it. They can technically go inside of this little bubble, right? It used to be a thing when that bubble happened, they couldn't go into the bubble, but now they 100% can. So that acro will run you down, and if you stay high enough above them, you don't have to worry about it because they can just not get aggroed and then you're good to go, right? So by staying up high, we're avoiding all of that shenanigans and hopefully we don't pull them. And if we do, we just pull them into the lava and we kind of skip everything here, right? That's the goal, skip it all. We don't want to run into the dinos. Um, you can see that as soon as we hit this wall though, we're kind of uh, into a zone of cold. Now that cold zone is great and all, but it's also very dangerous because it will kill you. And that's why we have our handy dandy suit. See how we have no issues at all because our uh, we have our fur on. We did take quite a bit of damage because of the heat, and but we were watching our health down there. Watch your health bar for sure. Um, but because we're wearing our fur, we don't need to worry about the actual uh, stuff down there. You saw that I died over there. That's just you know part of the game. The number of times I've died doing this cave trying to figure out all its like little tricks and stuff like that is almost laughable. All right, so the rest of this, your armor is going to be perfect. You want the cold resistance because that cold resistance is going to give you extra, um, what's it, fortitude, I guess. And, and that's kind of part of the trick of this boss fight is they want to make it as difficult as possible. So you can't just wear a whole bunch of flak or riot. Uh, I don't even care about the bird anymore. Sorry, buddy, you don't, you don't have any value anymore. And then we run up here. Now, if you've never done this before, this is your first teleport point. You get up to it, just tap it. It takes a minute. Now, there's nothing special that goes on in this minute, but you certainly want to make sure you're restoring your health at this point because you want to go into this boss fight with as much health as possible. So now we've gotten past the first chunk. Congratulations if you've never done that before. That's a, uh, a success. Good for you. Now, again, things you need to watch out for. We're going to fly for pretty much this entire boss fight, just so you know ahead of time. You're going to have your shotgun out. Nothing is dangerous until we get into the actual fight and it starts. Key points here. Only choose one side to stay on. Stuff in the sky needs to be taken out first. Once the scuff and the stuff in the sky is taken out, stay up high in the sky and take out the things underneath you. And that's pretty much it, right? That's... We don't really need anything else. That's how we beat this boss fight. And you can see that I'm gaining all my stats back up. We have all of our brews good to go. If you really wanted, you could wait those additional 370 seconds in order to refresh those, uh, but you don't have to. All right, so now we are next into this. I'm gonna go ahead and dismiss that. Sorry, that bothers me for some reason. And uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and waste my element. I wouldn't do that if I was you though, but you can get, just so you see, there's over there, um, pretty much every section in here has a uh, note. So you can get those bonus XP points. Um, I think you can get a four and a two, so you end up getting eight X XP in here. Um, but it's also a really cool cave. If you've never done this and you have time, take your time in this beginning part and just look around. It's really neat. It's uh, super cool. You can kind of look at all, like there's planet Earth, right? And off to the left over there, you can see like the initial arc setup. And then as you go, you'll notice that there's some things underneath your feet as well that are pretty freaking cool, right? Um, almost to the point where I can show you the actual arc underneath you. And I thought this was a really cool addition, right? You can see there's like the critical version of Earth. Oh no, we've got big problems. Everything's problematic. Oh no, we've got solutions. And then it's like, oh no. Now we've got a giant dinosaur land with everything that is just spawned in above us. And there is the arc beneath you. Now it's a super cool view, right? You can see there's the volcano. It's just a neat thing. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's a lot of fun to like look at this stuff. It's one of those things that's unique. Um, it takes a lot of detail to do something like this. So they put this all together and then they've got the additional arcs over here in front of us. 
Um, and this is kind of how they showed you. You've got the different maps and stuff like that, which is pretty cool, but that's neat. So you are fine standing right here. As soon as you start touching metal, this boss fight is technically going to start. So in order to avoid all of our major problems right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and slowly move our way down. And right now you'll see all of those green things show up, right? We're gonna avoid them. We're gonna avoid everything we can. So you wanna get up pretty high. I usually hover right about here. Now, if you hold shift, you will stay at the same height. And that's kind of our goal right now. We don't wanna move up. We don't wanna move down. We wanna pick a good height to sit at and stand above everything. Now, by standing above everything, we don't need to go fight anything on the ground again. So we're kind of cheesing the entire fight again, right? But that's the point. We wanna cheese everything. Some quick tips for you before we start this. If you hold spacebar, it takes more energy and it takes more stuff in order to actually move up and down. So more element is gonna be charged if you're holding spacebar. But if you hold shift like I am and stay at the same height, um, it's gonna use less element. So you just use that and then correct with space every now and then. In order to take our brews and things along those lines, we have to land on the ground. So I would pick a corner like that one or that one over there to use as your generic corner in order to land on the ground. Now, remember what I said, don't worry about anything on the ground until you take out the things in the sky first. And that is a generic rule of thumb. If you do not take the things out in the sky, you got big problems. So make sure you aim for the things in the sky first, right? So we took out those things in the sky. We don't see any more. Now we can start shooting. Oh, we see some more. If we can take them out before they get to us, that means they don't do damage. And that's our goal, right? Because if we lose our tech chest piece or our boots or something like that, we have to land. We have to use our backup stuff. And we can probably do this entire thing without doing any of that. But it is what it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to go through five phases, basically. You're going to go through phases where he's got that, like, shield up. He cannot take damage inside of that shield. And he's going to spawn in both flyers. Ow. Um... He's going to spawn in all these flyers all over the place. Try and use as little ammo them on as you can, but they are the important ones to shoot. So keep that in mind. Take them out of the sky as soon as possible. Make sure there's no more. And then do more damage to him. Now, once he gets low enough, he's going to transform into the first boss. Now, the first boss that you're going to face is the Megapithecus. The Megapithecus can throw a rock that will one-shot you. So stay high up in the sky and avoid the rock. When you see him throw it, the AI has gotten exponentially better. Make sure you are moving or changing your direction because it goes very high and it can kill you. So by staying higher up in the sky, we're avoiding that entire thing, right? And uh, we just want to keep, keep moving and either backing up, see how he's throwing that rock, right? We're just avoiding it. As soon as he throws it, I usually double tap spacebar, and that double tap of spacebar will give you the ability to dodge pretty much everything that's dangerous with it. Double tap that spacebar. Even if it wouldn't have hit us, we're staying high up in the sky. All right, so this is phase two. You've gotten the enough damage down on the original boss where you face the Megapithecus. And uh, again, this is in gamma only. If you're playing in alpha, you have to do different phases for each one. You kill this guy, and this is the only time you'll see him. Now, unfortunately, he can be a little bit of a pain in the butt because he does have a ton of health. It's not as much as the dragon, but it's still a ton of health, right? So, again, you're noticing that I'm double tapping spacebar every time he throws a rock because it's not worth losing to a rock. It's so frustrating. I have had that happen. It is not great to do that. All right, so if you can't tap spacebar, you're not good enough at it. See how I'm kind of hovering over his shoulder, this uh, Megapithecus' shoulder? You can do that as well in order to do the entire fight. Um, and he can't hit you with a rock if you're rotating in a circle because he can only throw the rock forwards. All right, so we're almost there. Come on now. Thank you. All right, so if he's not... There we go. See, now he's so far down that he can't even target us, so he's just gonna keep chasing us. That's what you want. There we go. All right, so Megapithecus is down. Notice how we're still maintaining that same height. I use those as like little um, awareness things. And they fixed it because you used to be able to land on those little lips right over there, but you cannot do that anymore. So just be aware of that. And remember, as soon as he spawns that, we're looking for things that are flying in the sky. There's some of them. Uh, did I shoot it before it even spawned in? That's kind of awesome. 
can't remember the last time I did that. And so here's the thing, right? Some people think that you're going to die if you get hit by the lasers. That is not the case. You will take a small amount of damage. I don't see any more things in the sky. Nope, we don't. Okay. So if you get hit by his lasers, uh, you will get basically with your stuff stunned. But because you can still hold shift or hold spacebar, um, you are allowed to hover in the sky and not take damage. Okay, that hurts. Why is that even a thing? Where did you get stuck where you took that long to to do damage? Um, so we're holding that shift in the space bar because we don't want to take damage. So this is that fa next phase of the boss fight. We're trying to get him down to enough health where he spawns in the spider. So see how he's got that going on right now? He's going to spawn in more things in the sky. Shoot them as soon as you can because that prevents you from taking damage. And there we go. All right, took three of them out before they could shoot me. And you can go into third person mode, but I personally prefer third one or first person mode just for this boss fight specifically uh, because I don't want to take damage from stuff from a distance. All right, so we should be pretty close to spider actually. And spider is the easiest one. So the reason we're choosing this side, by the way, some people like to not play on this side. Um, is because with this side we have to reduce the number of things that we can face and by staying close to a wall There's only so many things that can fight us, right? So he actually went to dragon that time. That's interesting I don't think I've ever seen him go dragon mode. This is insanely dangerous by the way The dragon is by far the most dangerous one that you're gonna face Do not get anywhere near the ground because this thing will fire and it will use its fire attack and you will die There is no surviving it. I Have made that mistake way too many times so just stay as high as you possibly can on the ceiling. Otherwise, you are in big, 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 big trouble. Sweet. Okay, so you can see that he still takes pretty heavy damage. However, of the three, he's got the highest health pool. So we're just trying to stay up in the sky to avoid him. Now, as soon as you get close enough to him, he will launch that fire attack. Do not get close to him. I can't say it enough. This is the one quick way to lose this boss fight, especially if you're doing it like I am right now, because he will, there is no surviving it. He will one tap you uh, because that flame not only does the damage for um, actually hitting you, but it also does the burn damage. So you can't heal fast enough to no matter how much health you have, um, it basically surpasses your armor. So just be very careful about that. All right, so I'm hovering as close as I can get to the ceiling and I'm just going in a circle, making sure that he has no chance to even hit me. There is no increased damage portion on him and he doesn't take increased damage from uh, firearms. So that's kind of what you're gonna think about. Just stay high. All right, so what other quick tips can I say while we're taking this guy out? Don't even worry about the things on the ground. Don't waste your ammo because as long as you're not landing, you don't need to worry about any of that. Um, so. Next thing, I guess, if you are running low on health or anything, you cannot take this while you're hovering in the sky. You have to land technically, right? So in order to do that, what you're gonna do is between boss fights, not during, between them, you want to take out um, a corner. So like that corner over there or that corner over there and land in it. Now, once you land in those corners, quickly take everything and then double tap to go back up into the sky because if you land long enough, they will bust your armor and you don't wanna do that, obviously. So I guess this is on official settings. I should mention that. So that's why it's taking me so long because this thing has a ton of health. It's almost ridiculous. Um, unfortunately, you can't kill the uh, dragon like this in the regular mode because he will spawn in his dimorphodons and those things will shred your armor, which sucks. I wish I could figure out a way to get past those. If you have any ideas for that, leave it in chat. I would really appreciate those ideas because I don't have a way around that yet. All right, so now we beat the dragon. We've beaten the... Uh, other one and now he's a little bit beneath half health he's going to go into this mode he's going to shoot the things into the sky keep in mind we're watching where he shoots those things into the sky there's one right next to us ow how did you even get that thing down before i i mean i feel like i shot okay what thank you ow 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 reloading all right so you can see that these things are that prio thing because they're the ones that are going to do damage to you see how i'm holding it i'm still shocked but i'm good to go right so keep unloading into this thing avoid those things if you can the uh little pipes because you want to not take damage and durability because you if we can do this on one suit which is very doable by the way that's our goal again notice how i was getting low to the ground there i'm double tap my space bar and i'm back up in the sky 
All right, next phase is going to be the spider. We don't want to let him, oh man, I let him get one last thing off. So if you do enough damage to this guy, he won't be able to launch a second wave. And that's a, a big time thing if we can avoid that, right? All right, now we've got to focus on these things before they can make it to us. Ow. Ah. So again, see why we're facing the, uh, we're trying to keep pillars between us and him is because when these things are chasing us, we want to avoid being stunned. Am I being shot by any more of them? I can't see them at least. Are they beneath me or something? Ah, I hate this thing. There we go. That might be it right there. That's it. Okay. So we're going to go up in the sky again. We're being shot. I was like, where are they? They were right above me. Of course they were. All right. So this is the, uh, where's the spider that she is. She takes a little bit to be able to kill her. Um, but I suggest you stay really high in the sky because she can still shoot her little like stuff. I don't know how to say it other than she can still shoot her stuff. So if you stay like above one of her shoulders when she's launching her goo, uh, there it is. So she did her last thing there. We should be able to shoot her pretty soon here. Come on now. Maybe that's it. Hmm. Sometimes it takes a second for her to like register that you're here and then you can kind of like kill her. There we go. Okay. So this one again, we're going back up to the sky because she can launch her little balls of death and you'll see him launch them in a second here and we're trying to avoid it. The benefit about the spider, she is, uh, oh, I have to be inside of her render range to shoot her. Oh, I hate this boss one. Come on now. There we go. All right. So if you can stay behind her shoulder, she cannot do damage to you. Um, until she launches her little balls like that right there. And if you just double tap spacebar when she does it, you can actually avoid all of them. So double tap spacebar and then you go from your mode back into uh, shift and you're good to go, right? We're back into our render range so we can shoot her again. And when she does her attack, we're going to double tap spacebar again. So um, notice how I'm rotating kind of around her in a circle. The reason that we're doing that is because we want to make sure there it is. We're double tapping spacebar. And we're good to go. So, reloading, shooting, and are we out of render range again? We might be out of render range. There we go. Okay. So, this is the one you have to stay close to, so it's a little bit of a change up. Okay, and there's the firing of the ball, right? We're going to go ahead and shoot again because we don't want to get hit by it. Double tap the space bar, and it's just rinse and repeat until she's low. Now, after her, the uh, boss kind of goes into final mode there. There we go, back inside of the range. She takes increased shotgun damage, so that's super nice. All right, there's Gamma Broodmother taken care of. And last up is this guy in final form, right? So as soon as he's got that shield up, he's gonna not take damage, and he spawns in his little homies over here. All right, there's, they're right next to me. Of course, you're gonna spawn him in right next to me. What a jerk. Okay, yeah, again. Focus them first. Ow, I hate this thing. There we go. Okay. Now avoid these if you can. Ooh, that one's gonna hit me. And then try and keep a pull between you and it because the uh, more you take from damage from those things, the more Dura you take on your chest piece and we want to avoid that. And it moves very fast. So we're just gonna keep shooting it. Yeah, buddy. We're pretty close over here. You can see probably one shot left, one one round left, I guess. Um, and it's still moving pretty quickly. We want to try and avoid letting it go into invincibility mode again, because if it goes into invincibility mode, then we can't shoot it. And then it's going to do another round of the things like that right there. Ugh, that frustrates me. I was so close, too. We might be able to actually kill him before we can take damage from those things. I stand corrected. Hey, we did it. There we go the overseer and you can see everything kind of blows up and it's so pretty right boom and it's that easy that's all you have to do you've got a little bit of a cooldown timer it does this cool little intro thing if you want there is a 4x note i believe on each corner i can't remember which corner it's on but you can get the 4x note and uh pretty freaking cool one of my favorite things to do is come stand like right in the edge of this and watch what's going on. 
because you can kind of see what's uh what's so neat about it you've got all these arcs above planet earth or at least it looks like planet earth and it's just fun to watch you can pump all your things you're gonna lose them anyways make sure you stay alive for this right you want to get your levels and then that's it it's really not that difficult and into oblivion yeah so if you look down it's like hey look at it there's the island island i'm floating above you thank you pass and then boom here we go and then all of a sudden it's like oh look at all the other arcs there's hundreds hundreds of thousands scorched earth extinction all these other ones and then planet earth here we come into this little evil corner of the universe Boop. is this what happiness felt like love no this is more like pride yes that's it i'm proud of you survivor you've accomplished what few have you've ascended I once did too, when I was her. Helena, she was an explorer too. And like you, she traveled the arcs and discovered their secrets. You're following in her footsteps. Keep going, discover what became of Helena and her friends. Survive the many challenges ahead and you'll find me here waiting for you. Together, we may yet be able to save our world. And that's it. So if you wait to watch to the end of this or did it on alpha, there's just still a little bit of like a little mini perk that you get, but then it goes back to press to start, create a resume, go into the island. You've got to essentially download your new character because it's got an update put into its arm and that's it. So if you watch the entire thing, uh, please make sure you smack that like button, leave a comment below for the algorithm and then consider subbing to the channel. That would be super awesome. Other than that, teach out.